All right, guys, let's go watch the exotic animal show here at Wild Florida. The rules. As we walk around, I'm gonna bring these animals very close to you guys. All I ask from you guys is not to touch the animals. If you guys end up touching them, they can get scared, they can bite you, bite me, we can all get pooped on. We don't want that today, okay? Other than that, if you guys have any questions, just wait until the end of the show, and I'll have all the answers for you guys. Is that clear? All right, guys, let's start the show with Mr. Blue. This animal here comes from Australia. Australia is known to have many predatory animals. I mean, you name it, Australia has it. But all of those animals are terrified of animals like Mr. Blue. Once they see them, they usually run away. Now, Mr. Blue is a blue tongue skink. So as I walk around, you guys might be lucky enough to see that he actually does have a blue tongue. And that's exactly what's terrifying about these animals. Whenever a predator comes around and tries to eat a blue tongue skink, he's going to show the blue, show the blue coloration of, the, of his tongue. And those predators are going to think he's venomous or poisonous. At that point, they're going to try and avoid him. If they find out that he's not venomous nor poisonous, they're going to eat him like a chicken nugget. He's going to be in a lot of trouble there. At that point, he has one of two options. He either fights back or he runs away. You guys think they're fast? They should be really fast, right? Usually lizards are fast. So let's imagine a monitor lizard going full speed against a blue tongue skink. He's going to go full speed and that's it. So he's going to be in trouble. He's going to have to turn around and fight that monitor lizard off. Now they stay very close to their burrows, so they live underground for the most part. They eat things like worms, crickets, the roots of plants, they plant themselves, fruits, vegetables, snakes, lizards. Anything that fits in their mouth, it's usually food. Anything that's bigger, it's usually a predator. Now if you guys see right here on the side of the face, they have those holes. Those are their ears. They can hear very, very well. They can hear the steps of predators walking above them. So they won't come out of the, out of the burrow for hours, if not days, waiting for those predators to go away. Now these guys are a type of lizard, they are a reptile, but unlike most reptiles, these guys do not lay eggs. They actually have live birth. So pretty much they keep the eggs inside the body, they hatch inside the body, and after that they give birth to live babies. Now that is all I have here for Mr. Blue. So everybody say bye Mr. Blue. Bye, bye. bye Mr. Blue. Alright, let's bring out the next animal. This animal comes from Central in South America. It can eat things like small reptiles, amphibians, birds, mammals, mostly all their animals. But they can get large enough to eat white-tailed deer. In some countries, like Venezuela and Colombia, they're called tragavenados, which means the deer swallower. Now this animal's name is Mocha. So everyone say hi, Mocha. Hi, Mocha. And here she is. Oh, okay. Yay, everyone's favorite, I see. Now this is a red tail boa or a boa constrictor. A lot of people confuse these guys for pythons, but the di difference is very simple. Pythons come from the old world, so Australia, Africa, Asia, places like that, where boas come from the new world, so the Americas. Also, pythons lay eggs, and boas have live birth. So again, they keep the eggs inside, they incubate inside their body, and they give birth to live babies. The reason for that is pretty much evolution. If you think about it, if a predator comes around and tries to eat a mama python, and the python gets away, she has to leave her eggs behind. Those eggs will most likely get eaten, right? But if a predator comes around and tries to eat a mama boa, and she gets away, all the eggs are still inside her body. So she saves herself in up to 50 babies at a time that she will have inside her body. So it's all part of evolution. Now as I walk around, you guys probably notice the tongue's going to be sticking in and out. Does anybody know what they're doing with that? Smelling. They're smelling, sensing, or tasting the air. They have an organ inside their mouth that you and I do not have. It comes out to pick up particles in the air multiple times from both the left and the right side. That's why it's divided into two ends. And it tells them whether a predator is coming from the left or the right or a prey item is coming from the left and the right. It also tells them whether something's a prey, a predator, or a friend. So right now that it's smelling me, what do you guys think it smells me as? A prey, a predator, or a friend? friend. Hopefully a friend, right? <laughs> I'll be in a lot of trouble. See, I think of me as a friend. It understands I am the one that feeds them. It understands I'm not food. And it understands I'm not trying to eat it. Now, if you guys see a snake in the wild, though, and it smells you, what do you guys think it smells you as? A prey, a predator, or a friend? 
a predator. Definitely not a friend, but a predator. I'll show you guys real quick how that works. I'm gonna put mocha here on the floor. Let's imagine the things that will eat a snake. A bird of prey, for example, will fly right in, grab it by its back, and fly away with it. A jaguar gets on top of a tree, finds the head and the neck, and lands exactly where that is. Everything that eats a snake comes from above. Now they're very long, they're just not very tall, they're only a couple inches off the ground. So whenever a human approaches, you're going to approach from above, that's predatory behavior. At that point, the snake has one of two options. The first one is to get away from you, the second one is to get you away from them. So a non-venomous snake is going to lift their head above ground. What they're trying to do is make themselves a little bit taller and they're going to hiss at you to let you know, hey, back up, leave me alone. If you approach it, try to grab it or kill it, the snake defends itself. If you back up and leave it alone, it goes back down and it goes on its way. Now venomous snakes have many ways to let you know to back up. The rattlesnake will rattle its tail, make a lot of noise, right? They do not rattle that tail against a rabbit because the rabbit will get away, they'll lose their food. They only rattle their tail when the snake itself is scared. So whenever you see that happening, their head is going to come above, the rattlesnake is going to rattle its tail, it's letting you know, hey, back up, leave me alone. Do not approach it, do not try to grab it or kill it, and you'll be completely fine. In fact, 90% of people that get hurt by a venomous snake get hurt above the waist, meaning they reach down to dry and grab it or kill it. 90% of those people are up between the ages of 16 and 35, obviously males, under the influence of alcohol. All right, guys, so whenever you guys are having a couple of drinks, leave the snakes alone and you'll be completely fine, guys. And I'm gonna grab Mocha here one more time, show you guys a couple cool features right near the face that you guys might not notice earlier. Right in front of the face, they do have a nose. There'll be those two holes right in front. They can smell just like you and I. Now, the coloration of the face goes into the eyeballs themselves. It makes it really hard for you to find a pupil. By the time a rabbit finds the pupil of a snake and notices what it's staring at, it's already being eaten. Now, the last thing is, these guys do not have eyelids. So they cannot close their eyes. Their eyes are always open even when they sleep. But they have a scale over their eyeballs that protects it from any debris touching it. And whenever they shed their skin, they also have to shed that scale over the eyeball. Another thing, actually, would be that these guys do not have ears. So they cannot hear any high frequency sounds. They can only hear low frequency sounds, for example, steps. As you step around, you cause vibrations on the floor. Those vibrations will hit a bone in their skull and that's all they get to hear. It's almost like whenever you go to a concert, someone's playing a bass, you know how you can hear the bass and also feel the vibrations. Imagine the vibrations without the sound itself. That's how these guys perceive sound for the most part. Now that's all I have here for Mocha. Everyone say bye Mocha. Bye Mocha. All right, let's bring out the third and last animal. This animal comes from Florida and his name is Fluffy. He was not inside his enclosure, so I guess it's either the end of the show or you guys can check under the benches. <laughs> Everybody's moving around, yeah. You guys gotta check out. I don't know. Nobody's checking though. <laughs> Just kidding, guys. He's back here. Hi, Fluffy. Hello. Is he a nice one? Please tell me he's a nice one. Everybody say hi, Fluffy. Hi, Fluffy. <laughs> All right, so Fluffy is an American alligator. The reason we have to say American is because there is a second type of alligator found in China, of course, called the Chinese alligator. Now, the Chinese alligator has about 200 left in the wild. They're almost extinct. And full-grown Chinese alligator will be about this size right here, just a little bit bigger than this. With the American, we have about 5 million in Florida alone, and they get as big as Crusher down there. Now, the reason we know he's an alligator and not a crocodile is usually because of the snout. The snout of the alligator is very broad and round, with the crocodiles is very slender and thin. The reason for that is because crocodiles like to eat larger prey items, so they should not have this big bulky head that alligators have. They have to move a lot faster. Now, alligators can still eat larger prey items, but for the most part, they like smaller things. They like fish, snails, and turtles. They have this perfect round snout. It's almost like a net. Whenever they move it around, they can catch tons of small fish at the same time. They can also grab a turtle by its shell with a perfect round snout, put over 2,000 PSI of pressure onto that shell. 2,000 PSI of pressure is the same amount of pressure we use to crush a car. So in that process, they'll break through the shell, a lot of times break their own teeth, and regrow them again within a couple of weeks. They can regrow their teeth over 3,000 times in a lifetime. So they'll never run out of those. Now they also have these things right here called scooter osteoderms. So whenever another alligator comes around and bites them, it doesn't allow the teeth to go completely through. It's almost like armor. It's very important for them. But it's also like a solar panel. 
These guys are cold-blooded, so for them to warm up, they have to get out of the water, allow the sun to heat all of these plates up that are connected to veins and nerves, and pretty much get all that warm energy throughout the rest of the body. That's why whenever you guys walk around, you guys saw the crocodiles, Crusher here is outside the water, they're all getting energy from the sun itself so that they can survive the cold tonight. They understand the cold is coming. Now, let's say you guys see a baby alligator in the wild. They hatch about this big right here. What happens if you grab it? Who's coming to defend it? <laughs> the mom's coming to defend it, right? Now, once you grab that baby, the baby's going to make a call to call the mom. You guys want to hear what that sounds like? Okay, let's see if I can get them to do it. <laughs> Mama, help! Just kidding, guys. Just kidding, guys. That's not it, guys. It sounds like this. Oh, 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 oh. Once that sound comes around, not only the mom comes to defend it, but any female in that pond, whether it's her baby or not, is coming to defend that baby. So first of all, it's illegal to grab alligators in the wild. Second of all, you have a whole army of alligators coming after you. So do not grab alligators in the wild. Now, last thing is do not feed these guys in the wild either. Again, it is illegal to do so, and you make them very dangerous. Naturally, alligators are terrified of humans. Native Americans were eating these guys left and right. So they understand by instinct that we're their only predators. So they stay away for the most part. Once you feed them, you teach them to get closer. That fear goes away. And let's say, for example, I'm feeding them hot dogs, right? I could throw hot dogs at them. Might be thinking it's a good thing, but they don't understand what a fridge is. They've never seen a fridge in their life. They don't understand I have a fridge full of hot dogs. All they see is hot dogs coming out of my hands, right? They probably think I'm ripping my fingers off and feeding it to them. At that point, I stop being a human being, I become a hot dog to the alligator, right? <laughs> Next time I come around with no food, he's gonna grab me with 2,000 PSI of pressure, same amount of pressure we used to crush a car, he's taking a leg or an arm or a life at that point. And it doesn't have to be me, somebody else could be walking around with a child or a dog, and the alligator would still come out thinking that that person's a hot dog, and he can hurt somebody. So do not feed alligators in the wild, if you guys want to feed them, just come back to Wall, Florida. We have many different options right here on the gazebo. It only costs an arm or a leg. <laughs> now give it up for Fluffy! Yay! Yay! Now who wants to hold Fluffy? These shows today, nobody wants to ever hold the mic. If you guys want to hold them, it is completely free. All you guys have to do is follow my friend here, Cloudy, to the back of the gazebo. You guys get to hold it for completely free. If you guys like the photos and take up you guys, there's many different options for you guys. Other than that, have a great day. Just follow Cloudy to the back of the gazebo. Quick question. What's up? Uh, see, crocodiles do what they call a roll. Yes, so if they catch something that is too big for them to swallow, They'll grab it and they start doing something called a death roll. So they roll and get a piece small enough for them to swallow. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that was the exotic animal show here at Wild Florida, just south of Kissimmee, Florida.